So welcome back, everyone. We're so glad to hear you or uh, see you. And we want to, at this time, uh, give you a warm welcome again, even though you already have received that, I hope. So at this time, we're going to um, continue with our segment, and that is Seed Time to Harvest, how to grow your own food wherever you are. So you don't have to be in the country as of yet, even though we want to be there. That's where we would want to be to prepare for what we saw is coming. There's a crisis coming, okay. and we need to be ready for that. Isn't that right, Cherise? That's correct. And I'm glad you have done your homework. You have sprouted your seeds. And so we're going to take you on to the next phase. What do I do with the packet with my seeds germinating? And you have your seeds with you. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Let's see those seeds. Oh, wonderful. That's good. Praise That's the Lord. Good. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so today we're going to be talking about soil, all about soil. Now, Jose, can we grow food in any soil? Well, food can grow, but it wouldn't be as healthy as you would want it to be. There's three types of soil that we have. And we have here an example of them. And by the way, I'm putting my gloves on because I want to shake your hand afterwards. <laughs> I like to get my hands dirty, amen? Amen. And here we have, if you're living in Florida, most of you know that all we have is can grow, as of, of course, or grass does grow, but it, you know, for you to get productive crop, you need good soil. And this is the largest particle of soil. Next, some of us may have, Jose, since you have a glove on, you may want to show us. Yes. This is clay. Clay is very hard, compact when wet. You can't really do much with clay. You can do some things, but it's really, it has, you have to do a lot of work to be able to grow things in your clay soil. And then you have silt, which is in between your sand and your clay. Now, for us to get the perfect combination of soil to be able to have productive vegetables, we need a rich, loamy uh, type of soil. And so we're going to show you how you can create this type of soil where you are so that you can feed yourself in your own home, whether you're in an apartment or have land, whatever you, wherever you are, you can do this simple mixture to be able to create the ideal soil for growing your food. All right, so here we have our different types of soils. Now the base for our soils is gonna be compost. <clears throat> compost is gonna be the base of our soils because we want the living organisms that are found inside the compost. And so that's what we will find here. We will find different types of soil mixtures. The first one that we have here is actually one that we bought from the store. This is a store bought. And inside this soil mixture, I'll pour it out so everybody can see. Inside this soil mixture, we have perlite, we have peat moss, we have alfalfa meal, we have kelp meal, we have um, a lot of different uh, types of amendments to the compost. And that is because we want to have a healthy uh, plant. And so we want to feed it so it could feed us. And then the, the next type, this is an organic garden soil, which you also find in the store. With this, the difference between this one and or pot of gold is the organic garden soil will have a lot of wood chips. This is mainly um, composted garden material as well as forest material. And so when we do our potted mix, we will sift this to get the majority of the wood chips out because, of course, the wood chips will leach the nitrogen from your soil. Right. And we have a sifter there. If you need information on how to uh, make a sifter, you can also contact us or email us on the back of the brochure that you will receive. That's to right. that mixture, we're going to add peat moss. Are any of you familiar with peat moss? Yes? Okay. You, peat moss is another um, amendment, amendment we add to our soil. It's very hard to grow directly in peat moss. What we add it for is aeration. It's good to retain moisture. With the sand, if you feed um, your soil grown in sand, what will happen is every time you water, the nutrients are going to leach from your soil. That's why you with sandy soil, you have to keep on feeding it and you'll find your plants are getting yellow or brown. And so with the sandy, sandy mixture, you will find that, with the peat moss, you will find that water is retained better as well as, well as it will help to retain your nutrients. 
So we, as we mix up the soil, we're getting ready to now plant. And uh, before we do, we want to also um, show our viewers what the soils are, what they look like. The bags here at the bottom, <clears throat> we see this is a garden soil compost. This is what we bought at the store, so everyone can understand what we're mixing here. That's right. It's really not anything out of this world. Something it, you can purchase your own. That's right. And you can grow directly in this soil. This is perfect for starting your in-house in garden. For advanced gardeners, you may, are any of you familiar with this? What this may be? I heard it. I thought somebody said it. Okay, this is vermiculite. You can also add this to your soil to enable your nutrients to be retained more. And there are other amendments that we may use because we realize that over time, your soil are going to decrease in nutrients, so you want to re-add your minerals. We use rock dust and C90. Anybody familiar with C90? Yes? Well, sea salt contains 90% of the minerals that are found in our bodies. While we won't go to and drink sea salt, we feed our plants with sea salt, and then we, our bodies will be able to absorb the minerals better from the food that we eat. So now we're going to show you, in the next phase, how to transplant your tomatoes. Home. So that way you can feel like I can go home and do this. You will, everyone here will receive this pot of soil, just like this one that you see here. For those of you that are online, <clears throat> contact us if you have any questions on how to make this soil at uh, seed time, seed to harvest at safe to serve ministry.com. And that's also on the website. So what we're going to be doing now is going to, we're going to be transplanting. And how are we going to do this, Sharice? Okay, so this is wonderful. This is actually a transplant from someone that came in. And I'm not sure how many of you can see these. Her tomato seeds sprouted. And many of you may ask, okay, now I have sprouts. Do we know what we're going to do with the sprouts? We're going to transplant. And you may realize that your tomato, the roots of your tomatoes may have gone through the paper towel. You want to be very delicate with your transplant so that none of the fibers are damaged during the process. And when you're transplanting anything, you want to make sure that the roots are wet to prevent shock. So what we're going to do is we're going to submerge our paper towel in some water. And this is going to help us to be better able to separate. And while you do that, Sharice, I'm going to fill up these cups. And what we're going to do is we're going to transplant them into the cups. We're going to use the soil mixture that we have provided for you. And then we're going to transplant those into these cups. So as you can see, Charisse is right now separating the roots from the paper towel. And don't be afraid to rip the paper towel. You That's would rather right. rip the paper towel than, than the to root. damage the root. But when you wet it, it will enable this, the roots to loosen from the paper towel, so it'll be easier for you to transplant that. And it's very simple when transplanting your tomatoes and all other seedlings. All you have to do is just use your finger to make a hole. You put the roots in, and you just compact the soil around it. The good thing about tomatoes is it will root all along the vine, so you don't have to worry about how deep you're going to transplant your tomatoes because it's going to root. And tomato is a type of plant that does not like water on the leaves, so you want to gently, right after you transplant, you want to gently water along the, just water the soil around your tomatoes because what happens is if when you wet your tomato leaves, that's when you attract a lot of disease. You'll get your mold, you'll get your leaf rots, you'll get your blight, and you don't want that. So whenever you water your tomato plants, you water the roots. Can you repeat that? Where do you water? You water the roots and not the leaves. All right, and we're just going to transplant one for demonstration purposes. You can let your paper towel sit in the water. The longer, the better. And after we've transplanted our tomatoes, They'll grow to where 
you, you let it stay in the small container to where you start seeing the roots coming out. And then you know it's ready for a bigger container. When we get from this stage, then we'll transplant it to a bigger pot. Tomatoes, they, one tomato plant can give you at least up to 50 pounds of tomatoes. And that depends on the root space that it has. So the bigger the container you give your tomatoes, the better, the more fruits you will get. And you can just put your put tomato plants on a stool by a window and let it stay there. You give it, um, what do you call that thing, Jose? The trellis? You trellis it. You give it some support so that it doesn't fall over and your tomato plant will flourish. Yes, one more thing I wanted to uh, recommend is that when you do um, use anything else that is not a pot, there's no holes in the bottom. So you want to make sure that you puncture holes in the bottom so that they do uh, the water drains through. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll drown the plant, the and you don't want to do that. Yeah. And sometimes you may be watering it, and that plant, a leaf will be turning brown, and you think, it needs more water, but you're really drowning it. So you're working against uh, uh, purpose. So make sure you have good drainage. All right. Who remember the next thing we did last week? Anybody? The green onions. How many of you were able to uh, regrow some green onions? No, I did. All right, oh, that's good. good. And do you know what you're going to do with your green onions or when do you transplant? No, I'm waiting for you to do All right, and so Jose is going to help us to find out how we transplant and when we transplant our green onions. All right, so we're going to use that same mixture that we just made right now, and we're going to put it in a pot size about so. So you can get your own pot side, or your own pot, I should say. Okay. And we'll, go ahead. And when you start seeing really green onions, as long as you have sufficient, you can tell the difference in the root, right? You were able to tell. You'll see the new root, they look a lot more, the, the color is really white compared to the others, are off-white, and you'll start to see your new growth. It's very simple. Green onions growing is very easy. Anybody can do it. You know, all you do is you give it sufficient spacing. In this pot, we wouldn't do more than six green onions because it needs space. The roots will get entangled and you need a lot of space for it to grow. You know, one more thing I noticed when I was putting the soil in here is that there was a lot of big chunks of wood chips. And you'll find that when you are buying the bags from the store, you get a lot of uh, wood chips in them. So. I would recommend taking the bigger pieces out. The wood chips may be competing with the plant for nitrogen, so you want to take those out. Right. And with the green onions, just like the tomatoes, all you need to do is you use your finger and you make a hole. With the green onions, you're going to put it in the hole and twist it. When you twist it down, your roots will not, you won't damage the roots, but they will all just coil in and then they'll branch out on their own. So it's very easy, you just twist it down. And then within a week or two, you'll have green onions that are ready to be clipped. This, we have too many in this bin, but we just wanted to make sure everybody is able to see it. So within two weeks, you won't ever have to regrow your onions. You won't, you won't ever have to buy onions. You can regrow, after two years, they're gonna seed, you collect your seed, and you sprout them just like we showed you, and you transplant, and then you can always have your green onions. All right, so now you know what to do with your green onions, right? So how many of us are going to actually plant our green onions now? All right. And again, you just water as needed. You don't have to worry about, you'll find that the tip of the green onion is going to be brown. That's okay. If you, can, you can clip it off and it will continue to grow. As we mentioned last week, the more you cut your green onions, the more they will grow. When you're transplanting, you also want to remember that it may shock the plant. So you want to make sure that you do this earlier in the day, mm -hmm. recommended very early, or later in the evening. Why is that, Jose? That way the plant will have time to rest before the sun comes out and scorches it. You don't want to scorch your plant when That's you're right. transplanting. So you want to make sure you do it early in the morning or late in the evening. 
And another thing you want to make sure is that you protect your transplant from wind because the wind will damage your, your seedlings. So you want to either put them in a shade house or put them in your garage or you know, somewhere where they're not damaged by the wind or the sun after you tr you've transplanted. Right. All right. Is that, is that all we have for them, Sherry? No, actually not. Okay. I would like someone to tell me what they think these are. Chives. Chives? No. <laughs> Anybody else? No. In the back. Yes, somebody in the back? Wheat garlic. Grass. No, not wheatgrass. Oh, somebody said garlic. There yes. we go. I, these, we have a gardener in the house. There we are. <laughs> these are garlic. And these are, how long, about a week and a half? Yeah, almost two weeks, I almost believe. Almost two weeks, almost two weeks. Garlics are everybody's favorite. Can we all agree? Yes. yes. And garlic is not only good for eating. Can we think of any other benefits of gardening, Jose? They have medicinal. They have medicinal purposes. Yes. What, what else? What, a, what about in the garden? Is there it's anything a, beneficial for it? For a gardener? Pests. For pests, it's okay. a repellent. All it right. is a repellent. Yes, yes. You know that we are actually planning on using these garlics that we've grown to put around the perimeter of our garden. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because rabbits and squirrels, they detest them. And deers. And so it'll keep those critters from eating our vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, and you can also take the garlics from your garden and use them in your natural remedies. If you have children, it's a great antibiotic. It's good for fever reduction, and it just smells. Jose doesn't, he likes to eat it, but I love the smell of garlic. It's, it has a very strong smell, and that's what makes it a very good insect repellent. That's now, me. garlics are very easy to grow, very easy to grow. Um, they're frost tolerant. As we said, they have a lot of medicinal benefits as well as pest control benefits. With your garlic though, when you, we purchase for planting, you have to purchase organic garlic to plant. Why? That's because regular garlic that you buy in the store, they're treated to make sure that they have a longer shelf life. And those are not the best to plant. With our garlics, you plant them, these are a bit close, but you plant, it's very simple. Two or three days before you plant your garlic, you want to separate them. You want to separate the cloves from the bulb, but you let the papery husk remain. What else do we do with our garlic, Jose? Well, the reason why we let the papery husk remain on there is because when we plant it in the ground, it won't spoil. Mm -hmm. It'll actually act as a protection, protection a right. protective barrier mm -hmm. from it spoiling. And so that's why we leave the husk on there. And then simply all we do is, sometimes they actually just grow on their own. Yes, because if you have garlic on the bulb and it's growing in your home, what do we generally do with those garlic? We throw it out. No, you put it in the soil and that's going to give you a brand new garlic bulb. You plant your garlic four inches apart, at least two inches deep, and Jose is going to demonstrate that to us. Also, the roots of the garlic de um, deters gophers, molds, and other burrowing insects that may actually eat the roots of your plants. So if you're going to put the garlic, if you're starting an outdoor gar garden, you'd want to just, I mean, these are two bulbs that maybe, I think it's three, that we separated. So you just want to buy, in the bag, you have four in the bag. Perhaps 10 of these will go around a 50 by 25 garden bed. So you'll just... Just pop them in the ground around your garden. Soon your bugs will be at bay. You will have garlic that you can use in your home, even for medicinal purposes. And so when you plant your garlics, you just spread the dirt slightly over it. And that's all you have to do. Very simple. There you have it. And that's just the way that we grew these. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it takes very little time for them to start growing. Now, I, I believe you said that you want to make sure that you have enough space because you want that bulb to be able to grow. Expand. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you separate them at least four inches apart. At least, that's right, that's right. And you know, one thing that I, I wanted to mention as I was playing with this soil, as I was working with the soil, that it, is, it just feels so soft, and that's from the, the peat moss, and it clumps up together very nicely, so you know that it's holding moisture very well, and this is how you want to see 
your soil. Mm -hmm. This is how you want to see it. That's actually a wonderful color because, you know, majority of your microorganisms and your living organisms as well as your microbes, they live in the compost. So you want that because they're going to break down whatever you put in your soil and they're going to in turn feed your plants. So when you see like worms or little critters in your garden, don't squash them. You have some good bugs and some bad bugs, which we're going to talk about in the future. But all those are required in the soil's ecosystem so that your plants will be successful in growth. That's right? right. And there, there you have it. That's it for today. All right. Anything so at else this you time, want to share? Yes, at this time we're going to have our team members. They're going to be handing out the... Um, some brochures, the brochures on the information that... The handouts for this week, because we did cover a lot of information, and we want to make sure that you have it in writing. That's so we're right. going to be giving those out for our viewers online. We will have those available also online on the website, and look for that uh, sometime this week. So as a review, we talked about... What did we talk about today? We talked soil. about soil, right? Yeah. That this The soil is the heart of the Garden. gardener and you know the, the Lord as as uh, and Andrew was talking about you know what kind of soil produces fruit yeah. it's a good ground. it's the good soil the good ground and this is the type of here that we want to see when the word comes into the heart or when the seed comes into the ground mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we have some good ground all and right it, and it takes work so if you work your soil over time, you'll have that wonderful soil recipe that will make your plants flourish. And so we want to, your homework for today is again, transplant your tomato seedlings as, as well as your green onions. And if possible, try to grow at least two cloves of garlic. Also, we have another homework, Jose. Yes, yes. You know, growing food is, is something that is an investment. And so at this time, we want to also encourage you to put some money aside for a gardening budget because this will be an investment for you, for your life. And so we want to encourage you to put some money aside so that you can be able to continue to do this. And then also remember, we, we reminded you as you buy organic food that you save the seed. So you're growing food, you're saving seed, you're thinking about how am I going to be able to sustain life for my, myself, my family, those around me. Mm -hmm. Just like, so we can be like who in the time of Pharaoh? Joseph. Like Joseph. Like Joseph.